Hello folks and welcome. So Debian 12 XFCE desktop, Debian 12 bookworm, filming in 1080. Welcome folks. Today's video is going to be about uh, calendars, advanced calendar. I'll give you an example of some of the things I'm going to be showing. If you know somebody's birthday, you can uh, tell them what day of the week they were born on. You can do the same thing with history. If you know a specific day, let's take it was May 5 and 1556, I can tell you what day of the week that fell on, like a Monday or Tuesday, or that kind of thing. I can also show you three months of calendars or a full year in two formats. All of these things can be performed rather easily. Now, there's lots of different skill levels of users out there. Some folks are brand new to Linux, and some people have been using Terminal for a while. Some people, not so much. If you're the type that is kind of shying away from that terminal, this video should make you comfortable because we can do some fun things today. Again, welcome folks, filming in 1080. Got this uh, wallpaper from wallpaperswide.com. Guys are skateboarding. I got this a couple years ago, thought I'd have a little fun. Last week I talked about time and date elements and that is attached to this calendar. That calendar is not as, um, as powerful as the one I'm about to show you. So I will make this a little bit larger for you. Control, Shift, plus, plus, plus. All right, if you are fairly new to um, Debian or Linux, welcome. This is our user today, Kim. It's just a made up name and our computer name is Debian 12. So if you type in this command here, and it got, gets you this response, that means it's installed. If you get a bash error, born again shell error, and then it's not installed. And I'll show you two ways to install this. And uh, you can either use Synaptic, Package Manager, or Terminal to install it. And then I'll probably end up showing you both. So the command that you're actually going to be looking for, or a package, is this one. So you can perform either one of those commands once NCAL is installed. And I'll talk about the installation process last in this video. So this particular calendar is not stupendous. It's the same as this one. It's just formatted a little differently and it highlights the date. Well, kind of like this one, highlights the date. This one does not. So the cal command is displaying the Sunday in a vertical fashion. So it's 7, 14, 21 and 28 versus here, it's 7, 14, 21, 28, this way. Not, still nothing great. We can also type in cal space dash three for three months, June, July, August. Or we can type in ncal space dash three, also for three months, but it highlights July 20, 28th. So center month is the, um, current month and then previous and next month. But it gives you the Sunday across the panel. It may be a little bit harder for you to read. So at least you can display it in two different formats if you'd like that. I'm gonna punch up clear because the screen is full and type in Cal space this year, 2024. So this is 12 months. I'm using my computer mouse scroll wheel. I'm using a tower computer fairly standard wireless keyboard and mouse. I don't particularly care for touchpads. So that's the full calendar for 2024, starting in January, ending in December. All right, it's punching up clear. I'll put it in a different way. NCAL 2024. Highlights July 28th. Punching up clear. Typing in Cal space dash J for Julian calendar. If we need to know what these things mean, we can either use the internet or you can also use man pages. MAN stands for man pages, manual pages. It's a lot of uh, commands. Uh, if you need a definition is done with this MAN space and you can type in Cal if it's installed and it will give you the definition of both Cal and NCAL. So even if you use MAN NCAL, that's the same command. 
punching up Q. There's lots of options. All right, let's have a little fun. That's the whole idea to get comfortable with terminal, right? Type in Cal space. You got somebody's uh, birthday in mind? All you need is their birthday, month, day, and year to have a little fun with them. So let's take uh, someone born in May. That would be a five. And what's what year? 1967. I'm just throwing updates. So if you got a friend or family member that was born in May of 1967, and that uh, friend or family member was born on the 23rd, they were born on a Tuesday. You can have all kinds of fun with your friends and family. All you need is their birthday and year. And you can tell them what day of the week they were born on. This works for any birthday. All right, I'm going to hit my arrow key, upper arrow key, to repeat that command. And then I'm going to use my backspace to go all the way back to Cal, then put in a space, and then type in May of the same year. And that calendar is the same. If I wanted to use NCAL, I can also do it that way. And I can use the five if you want, or the or type in May. What about dates in history? Yes, we can do that also. So if you're a historian or a college student looking for information on a specific date. So let's put in, um, let's see, we'll take uh, February, which is two. And then we'll put in a year. Let's just make up one, 1556. So that's the calendar from February of 1556. So let's say you are looking for a specific date. Let's say the 12th of May, of uh, February of 1556. That would be a Wednesday. Month, year, calendar. So whatever date you're looking for. We can also do full calendars from the same year, 1556. January through December. All right. So punching up clear, I think I showed this earlier. You can also do uh, NCAL-J, Julian calendar. And you can also display it this way. Okay. Monday is 183. Anyways, um, so I showed three months worth. And you can also do NCAL and it will highlight the uh, current day of the. We can also talk about future calendar. So let's say you are wanting something from next year. Maybe you got a car registration thing coming up or some special event. Maybe you're going on vacation. Wish I was, but never mind. <laughs> but anyways, um, so let's say uh, for the year 2025, you got uh, some R and R coming up, some uh, rest and relaxation, and uh, let's say it's uh, June. You wanted to know what the calendar for June was. Well, here you go and you wanted to know specific dates. Maybe your flight leaves on the 7th, or maybe you're driving. Well, it's a Saturday for the year 2025. Having fun with calendars. We can do lots of things with these things. All right, I'm gonna close this box and talk about installation of NCAL. You can go find your Synaptic Package Manager and this will normally not be installed. I'm going to use the search feature with name only. Normally that defaults to description. So I'm going to type in NCAL, four letters. NCAL will normally not be installed, normally. You can find that out by typing in CAL in terminal. All right, I'll show you what the error is when you do this. So I am, you can either mark it for installation and then hit apply. I'm going to remove it. It's probably something you, I haven't shown before is removals. And then I'm going to install it through terminal so you can get that experience also. Okay. 
I'm just waiting for it to complete. And now we're done. Now when I open up terminal, I will make it larger for you again. That would be a control shift and plus 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 a couple of times. And type in cal. Try to type in cal if I can spell it correctly. It's only three letters. Bash cal command not found. Bash stands for born again shell. That's the shell that it uses in terminal by default. Unless you changed it. But generally born again shell is a very common shell found on most Linux distros distributions. I can do the same thing with NCAL. Now a lot of you distro hoppers are used to typing in sudo. Super user do apt install. It's a Debian system, right? Yeah. NCAL. And you go, okay, I'm gonna put Kim's password in. Just like I did in Synaptic. Whoops, it failed. Kim is not in the sudoers file. That means Kim doesn't have the authority to do sudo in here. But I was able to install it in Synaptic Package Manager and I can remove it there. So we need to type in su. Type in your password and that should be the password of the user that installed the system or root. And then it'll say root at Debian 12. Now I can type in apt install. And again, ncal is the name of the package, not cal. If you type in cal, which I'll do for you, you'll see that you get an E, unable to locate package cal. That means it's not in the library. All right, so I'm gonna use my arrow key to repeat that command and backspace to erase that. APT space install space ncal is what you want. Takes off because I'm already logged into root. I'm waiting for the connection and then it finishes up with a prompt at the bottom. So it installed and setting up ncal 12.1.8 It's the current version. Okay, so let's type in exit to get to normal mode. It turns green. I'm going to punch up clear and type in cal. That's how you know that's installed and end cal. Okay. So two ways of looking at that. You also have history of commands. If you're not aware of this, these are all the commands that I just performed, including that bogus one. And more importantly, it keeps tab of all the stuff that I just did. So even if I do this, I can actually borrow that and punch it in here by pasting it. You get a warning box. It's faster typing it. If you're curious about where those commands are stored, open up your file manager, hit control H to show hidden files and folders. This is born again shell history. It starts with a period or a dot, bash history, dot bash underscore history. These are all the commands. I'll do a reload. So it has all the commands in here. That's what you're just viewing without the numbers. Okay, so if you have that open, normally you don't want terminal open at the same time. Otherwise you got to reload because it's a live file. And actually, as soon as you put in a command, um, there's two of them, I didn't realize. Oh yeah, I see that, I have the second one is open. So let me first just open this real quick and let you see the last command because it's closed currently. The last command is called cal-j. Okay, I'm gonna close that, close that, and reopen that. And then, um, I can also, I'm just going to type in a DF command just so it's different and then type in exit and it's going to record both of those. And I want to open up the same document and scroll to the bottom. See, there's the DF command and the exit. So it's storing all your commands in this little tiny text file, if you're curious. 
Control H turns that off. Alt and F4, thank you for watching.